Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we are in the little shop. I recently moved, and so I've gotta get the little shop back up and running so that when I don't have access to the big shop, I can still get some products made. With that said, the first thing we gotta work on is closing it in because although this is a nice corner of my basement, I wouldn't want to keep the woodworking stuff in this corner of the basement rather than getting dust and particles everywhere else. So first thing we're gonna do is have a track system. So, before we get started, I kind of want to show you everything we got. From stripcurtains.com, I have their roller bearing uh, track slides with hooks on them to catch a curtain, as well as two six foot sections of rod and a bend so that we can get a nice swoop to be able to open and close this curtain as we need. Now, because I have kind of short ceilings in here, I'm actually gonna mount it directly to the joists rather than using hangers. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some pre-drilled holes into these uh, rails so that they can hold themselves up. And I've got some GRK cabinet screws that are two and a half inches long to really hold this sucker to the roof. So with that said, we're gonna get these holes drilled, mount these up, and then I will show you how we're gonna take these canvas drop cloths to make ourselves our curtains. With that said, let's get drilling. Rack. Now I did actually have to redo this because the first time that I drilled the holes they were not centered enough and the cabinet head screws were too wide and they interfered with the wheels as they rolled through. Again, not an issue you have to worry about it if you use the standard hangers, but because I'm mounting this to my ceiling directly and not using the hangers to gain that little bit of extra space, it is an issue I had to deal with. Now, with that said, we are going to work on the curtain. And again, this is another thing. If you just use the curtains that they sell, this is a, not an issue for you. You would just hang up your curtain and be done. But since I'm gonna make my own curtain, uh, my next step is to hit the sewing machine. So I will see you all at the sewing machine. This is actually in my office, so behind me is where I do my editing and uh, do my virtual teaching, now that we're teaching online. And uh, right here on the other half of the room is my sewing space. And so uh, this is my Necky, it's a 1950s Italian sewing machine, and uh, this puppy's gonna have no problem sewing through this canvas. And so what we're gonna do is just one nice uh, thick seam right down the center, just to stitch it together. Again, it's not really meant to be structural, it's only just gonna ensure that the two panels do not operate separately. Once that's done, we'll take it back downstairs, do some measurements to figure out where it's gonna sit, and we'll be back up here in the sewing studio to put in buttonholes so that we can hang everything. So with that said, let's get sewing. basement and this is just a quick trip down here but we do need to get a measurement. We are going to be using these hooks and we put a buttonhole in so I can hold on to them and so it's just trying to figure out 
how down, how far down I want to get these holes so that the tarp does not drag too much on the floor, but also so that I have good clearance. Again, this tarp is six foot tall, and so if I put the hole right at the top, I should just clear the bottom. And that looks just about right. So, know what I have to do, know where I have to put my buttonholes. So let's get back upstairs to the sewing machine, put on a buttonhole attachment, and let the machine do its job. And so here we are back at the sewing machine. We've got all of our spacing lined out for where we need to put in buttonholes. And I actually have a buttonholer attached to my sewing machine. And so basically what this does is it turns off the feed dogs that allow, uh, that pulls material through and it just sits flat. And this thing moves and oscillates to create buttonholes. And so it puts a double stitch, loop, nice loop stitch, and then you just make one slit in the middle and you can grab it. And so I've got these laid out. I did the first one to make sure it works. And so what I'm gonna do now is just line these all up and basically the machine will do it by itself. So kind of an easy thing to do. It's one of those attachments that you're like, I don't really need it, but uh, like many woodworking tools and uh, many uh, things in life, uh, sometimes having the right tool for the right job makes everything go so much faster. Now this is one of those things that you can definitely do by hand, but um, I'm now done. No effort on my part. All I have to do is get it lined up and set. And very much like many woodworking jigs, it does everything for you. So with that said, I'm going to power through. I have uh, 16 more of these to do, and then we'll bring you back and uh, we'll get this thing hung up and we'll uh, call this curtain job done. And here we are with the finished track system. It is fully hung on the ceiling. The curtain is all set and it works perfectly. All the shavings that pop off of the lathe land right here and any that gets in real distance end up hitting the curtain and falling down, which makes it super easy to sweep up and then get rid of those shavings, keeping this area of the basement clean as well as the rest of the basement pretty clean. Uh, now we should probably talk about the elephant in the room, which is that this isn't the same workshop that you guys are used to. And that's because of this. And so the old workshop is dead. All of those tools were underwater, and so almost all of them have rust in the motor windings. I tried to save some of them, but they are just, honestly, they're beyond the worth of repairing them. And so we had to rebuild the shop. I was able to salvage some of the parts of this bench, and then I added on a big wing. Again, I have this much bigger space for my shop in this new basement, and so I expanded. I added a much longer workbench, and I kept this area here so that I now have a flat work surface if I want to do assemblies or big projects where I need to lay a lot of things out. I now have a workbench to do that, while then also having a workbench that holds all of my tools. And so we can start up here and just kind of talk about some of the new things we have. We do have a new Craftsman drill press. This is actually a drill press that's just been sitting in my dad's shop unused for years. And so since he's not using it, I grabbed it to replace my old Harbor Freight unit. And again, it's magical. Harbor Freight tools are great for some things, uh, but not for others. And their drill press, their drill press just wasn't doing it. And so this old trusty, super heavy Craftsman is now on duty in the little shop. And here is the heart of the shop, and that is a Laguna Revo 1216. I loved my Nova Comet, but that lathe was just a little too light duty for how I turn. I would take aggressive cuts and the whole machine would tip, and all of that is gone with this Laguna. This thing is heavy, it is wide, and it is industrial. It's got a banjo built like my Powermatic, and so it's much nicer, it doesn't slop. Uh, and slip around as much and the DRO makes it super easy to determine how fast you are turning and so this is a massive upgrade that I am super excited to have in the shop. Down at the end of the bench is not an upgrade it's simply a replacement. I love those Rikon 8 inch slow speed grinders and so when mine died I simply bought another one to replace it. It's, they work great and so a new one at the end of the bench so I can keep my tools nice and sharp. Down here on the floor we have the biggest addition and that is under bench storage. 
Previously, I did not have a lot of underbench storage because there are a lot of tools under my bench, but now that I have my tools all on the benches, I now have more space. And so the biggest addition here is this old dresser. It was just kicking around in the basement. It fits perfectly under the bench. And so this holds all of my blanks, all of my finishes, all the stuff that I need to keep on hand lives in this dresser, keeps everything nice and organized. I know exactly where everything is, where everything goes. I have my sanding supplies. I have my cleanup with my shop vac. I've got my Fortress air compressor. This silent air compressor is awesome. I love it. And then over here are my not as used tools. I have a box of extras and then my drills and drivers, all my M18 Milwaukee tools that I use for, you know, kind of general house maintenance. And so this underbench storage is probably some of my favorite because it has allowed me to keep everything real close at hand without everything getting messy and dirty since it is all now put away. And that's a wrap, the shop is back in order. We have new tools, we have new benches, we have a new curtain, we've got some new lights. Everything is set to get another project underway. I do wanna add a backer board here, something that I can hang some tools on, but that'll be a later update. For right now, everything is back up and running so that we can get a project underway. So come back for the next video where we're gonna make something in this shop. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, have a wonderful day where I run my small lathe and some of my small, oh god, I don't have so much right now. Um, I've got nice studs and well, I'll send these little clips all the way around. And so they go all the way around and they fall out the back of them. Didn't have the power and more importantly, I don't know.